The best ten case of the Red Army, Dmitry Lavrinenko. In October 1941, Lavrinenko learned that a German column of up to a battalion was moving along the highway from Malayaroslavets to Serpukhov. The Serpukhov's commandant didn't have any forces to defend the city. Parts for the defense of Serpukhov were about to come up, and before that, Firsov had all the hope for one and only Lavrinenko's tank. In the grove near Visakinichi, Lavrinenko's T-34 was ambushed. The road in both directions was well seen. A few minutes later, a German column appeared on the highway. Motorcycles were rattling ahead, then there was a stuff car, three trucks with infantry and anti-tank guns. The Germans were extremely self-confident and didn't send a recon group ahead. Letting the column down 150 meters, Lavrinenko shot at point-blank range. Two artillery guns were immediately defeated. The German gunners tried to deploy the third one, but Lavrinenko's tank rushed onto the highway and crashed into tracks with infantry and then crushed the gun. Soon, the Soviet infantry unit came and finished off the stunned and bewildered enemy. The crew of the Lavrinenko's tank handed over to the commandant of Serpukhov 13 machine guns, 6 mortars, 10 sidecar motorcycles and an anti-tank gun with full ammunition. On October 6, 1941, during a battle in the area of the Perivoyen region, the tank group of Lt. Lavrinenko, consisting of 40 34 tanks, attacked a German tank column that was drawn into a hollow to destroy the mechanized infantry battalion of the brigade. The attack of the Lavrinenko's group turned out to be very timely, since the Guderian tanks surrounding the soldiers began to shoot them from machine guns and crush them with caterpillars. Avoiding the approach to an excessively close range, the T-34 opened fire on enemy tanks, constantly changing firing position. Appearing in various places, 434s impressed the Germans with the action of the large tank group. In this battle, the crew of Lieutenant Lavrinenko destroyed four German tanks, the crew of Senior Sergeant Antonov seven tanks and two anti-tank missiles, the crew of Sergeant Kapotov one tank, the crew of Junior Lieutenant Polanski three tanks and four motorcycles. Lavrinenko's platoon had no losses. The battle was held quickly, the motorized rifle battalion was saved. On October 9th, in a battle near the village of Sheina, Lavrinenko alone was able to repel the attack of 10 German tanks. Using the proven tactics of tank ambushes and constantly changing position, the Lavrinenko's crew thwarted an enemy tank attack and destroyed one German tank. On November 17, 1941, not far from the village of Listsova, the tank troop under the command of the already senior Lieutenant Lavrinenko, consisting of three T-34 tanks and three BT-7 tanks, entered battle with 18 German tanks. In this battle, the Germans managed to set fire to two BTs and damaged two 44s, but they themselves lost seven tanks in return. Lavrinenko's tank wasn't damaged in this battle, and soon the remains of his tank group liberated the area of Lysseva. Lavrinenko secretly led his T-34 toward the German tank column, and in the vicinity of the highway going to Shishkin, set his tank in an ambush. True, this time the position that Dmitry's tank took could hardly be called an ambush, since there were no convenient shelters anywhere. The only thing that helped was that the tank, painted in white, was almost invisible in the snowy field, and in the first minutes of the battle the Soviet tankmen were in the most advantageous position. Soon a German column, consisting of 18 tanks, crawled out into the road. The balance of power was totally stacked against Lavrinenko. But there was no time to think, the 34 opened fire. Lavrinenko hit the sides of the leading German tanks, transferred the fire to the trailing one, and then, not letting the enemy come to his senses, gave several cannon shots in the center of the column. Lavrinenko's crew destroyed six German tanks and then, using the favorable terrain, slipped away from the pursuit.
On November 19, 1941, in the village of Gusineva, Senior Lieutenant Lavrinenko witnessed the death of General Panfilov. At that moment, eight German tanks appeared on the highway near the village. The crew of Lavrinenko instantly took their places in the tank and the 34 at maximum speed rushed towards German tanks. In front of the column, it turned to the side and froze still. At the very same moment, shots were fired. Lavrinenko shot at close range. Charge of Fedotov barely had time to deliver shells. The first shot destroyed the lead tank. The rest stood up. This helped Lavrinenko to shoot without a miss. With seven shells, he destroyed seven tanks. On the eighth shot, the gun trigger stuck, and the last German tank managed to escape. Before the tankmen had time to take a breath, another ten German tanks appeared on the highway. This time, Lavrinenko didn't have time to shoot. A shell pierced the side of his 34. Badney, a driver mechanic, was killed. Shooter radio operator Sharov was mortally wounded by a splinter in his stomach. Lavrinenko and Fedotov, with difficulty, pulled him through the hatch of the turret, but Sharov died immediately. It wasn't possible to bear Bedny. Shells began to burst in the flaming tank. Lavrinenko destroyed his last tank in battles on the outskirts of Volokolamsk on December 18, 1941. His advance party broke into the Graudachis Manor and caught the Germans off guard. Not expecting the approach of the main forces, Lavrinenko decided to attack the village of Pokrovskaya. But the enemy came to his senses. Germans let Lavrinenko's group go forward and, pulling up ten tanks and anti-tank missiles, began to advance towards the village of Guruni to cut off the advance party from the main forces of the brigade. Having discovered the movement of German tanks in the rear, Lavrinenko turned his party around and led it into an attack on the Guruni. Just at that moment, the main forces of Katukov mobile group came up to the Gurini. As a result, the Germans themselves fell into ticks. They were totally defeated. In this battle, Lavrinenko destroyed his 52nd tank, two anti-tank missiles and up to 50 German soldiers. Having failed, the enemy brought down heavy fire from heavy mortars at Guruni. At that time, Colonel Chernayarov, commander of the 17th Tank Brigade, called Lavrinenko to clarify and coordinate further actions. Having reported the situation to the colonel and having received an order to move forward, Lavrinenko went to his tank, but not reaching a few steps, he suddenly fell in the snow. A small fragment of a mine cut short the life of the most productive tankman of the Red Army. Lavrinenko didn't conquer for long. Less than six months have passed from his first battle at the border until his death near Moscow. He participated in 28 fierce battles and always came out victorious. He burned three times in a tank. In battle, he acted extremely actively and resourcefully. Even being on the defensive, Lavrinenko didn't wait for the enemy but looked for him using the most effective methods of warfare. As a result, 52 tanks destroyed. Of course, the names of more successful tank aces are currently known. Compared to such aces as Whitman, Carriers and others, the number of tanks destroyed by Lavrinenko is small. But almost all German tank aces went through the war from start to finish. Therefore, their results are so significant that they delight and amaze those who are interested in armored vehicles and the history of the Second World War. However, Lavrinenko destroyed his tanks in the most critical and tragic days of 1941. Do not forget the fact that Lavrinenko destroyed his 52 tanks in just two and a half months of fierce fighting. His result could have been significantly higher if a mine fragment had not killed the senior lieutenant.